Good morning, my friends. My name is Sam, and in today's video, I wanna talk about why you should go bioactive. Stick around, and we'll get into it. So as you guys might know, there is a million different ways to keep your reptiles. When it comes to snakes, you can put them in cages, you can put them in snake racks. When it comes to tortoises, you can do tortoise tables, you can do all sorts of things, outside, inside, blah, blah, blah. But a big factor that people are really moving to, which I'm really happy about, is going bioactive. Bioactive is essentially making an enclosed ecosystem within a cage. What that does is basically makes the cage self-sustaining, so the maintenance is very low, and it also just creates a more natural environment. To me, personally, I like this because it creates a more naturalistic looking setup. It allows for you to witness the animal observing more natural behaviors. Um, and it's just really nice to see a fully enclosed ecosystem inside something that's so small. Now, when it comes to my bioactive setup, I'm about, I'd say 50% there on my enclosures with my animals. Um, about half of them are bioactive and then the other half are not, but I am working on getting it to that point. So I have a, basically a wall of some exoterra cages over here. That one's not exoterra, but I really, it really aggravates me that it's not because Seeing that one out in there is kind of, ugh, it's ugh. Um, but yeah, so I'm about halfway there with all bioactive. So, you know, it's, it's just so nice to be able to see and look at these cages and you just see basically just this little jungle. And that's the thing I really love about it, especially when you get labels and stuff and all that like there. Um, it's really, really satisfying to see. So in terms of all my bioactive, so I got my two crested geckos here. I have one of my poison dart frogs. I have a white tree frog, and then I have my other poison dart frogs over here. This one is one of my favorite enclosures that I set up. Make sure that's closed. Um, you know, and it's just really nice to be able to see the stuff like this and just look like, oh wow, it's like, it looks like a zoo a little bit. Um, and then obviously, you know, I have my grand big bioactive six by two by two pancake tortoise enclosure, which is freaking awesome. Now I also have my Conexus homiana tub over here. Um, it is bioactive, it just doesn't look pretty because obviously it's not set up in a glass enclosure, it is set up in a 110 gallon tough stuff container, but it is so efficient using this setup. Uh, but yeah, it is actually bioactive. I got a ton of microfauna in here. I got isopods, springtails. I got plants that are growing significantly just from this one light here. And I don't even have a plant light, which is the craziest thing. Um, you know, ideally, I would like to make a setup for these guys that's more similar to this and make it bioactive and just, you know, have it set up to their type of, you know, ecosystem, which would be like a forest. But uh, for the time being, this is, this is what we're gonna have to deal with for now. But basically my next setup that I'd like to make bioactive is my Gila monster enclosure. I'd like to get some more deserty looking plants. Um, all I really would need to do is just get a light set up in here. Um, the biggest worry is this substrate whip here. For my pancake tortoise enclosure, I have a five inch substrate layer. Um, and I would really like to do that for all these enclosures. It just sucks because, you know, I've spent so much money on all these enclosures and everything. and you know, I would kind of have to just buy new and do it over again. And you know, it's just, it's just a big hassle doing all that, but that's what goes with it. And you know, at the end of the day, I could probably just sell these extra enclosures maybe, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I really like to go bioactive and all my other ecosystems here. So what are the downsides to going bioactive? Um, everyone's gonna have their own opinions. Truthfully, I don't think there's any. The only biggest issue with going bioactive is it's expensive you will spend a lot of money because you gotta do substrate layers, you gotta separate everything. If you wanna do backgrounds, which I love doing fully enclosed backgrounds. I like all sides of the enclosures to have essentially a background. I don't like having it like clear on one side and then it's just the back back. Um, I like the full thing to look enclosed. So it's gonna cost a lot of money. Plus it, it comes with the hassle of are you going to be growing your own isopods and springtails? I do, thankfully. So, you know, I get to save that cost out. But if you're someone who has to go and buy them, you're actually spend money on those too. And not a lot of money to buy them, but you know, it is just something to keep in mind. 
Um, other than that, another big thing I hear people say is the maintenance. The maintenance is a scent. All I really do is spray my enclosures. Um, very easy to maintain, but you gotta keep in mind, you gotta trim the plants because they are gonna grow and they grow faster than you think. For example here, uh, this little palm tree that I had in the back, I actually cut off, it looks so ugly now, I don't know why I did this, but I cut off the ends of it and it's still doing good, but you know, I want, it was overgrowing so much that the light wouldn't even go down. Now, these guys do live on the forest floor in the wild, but you know, it, it, it were naturally, it, the light will diminish as it gets lower in between the layers of the rainforest. But I do like to see some of that light get down. Um, but you know, the biggest thing, if you keep pothos in your enclosures, these are gonna be the things you wanna trim. Look at how quickly these and how big they grow. They just overtake everything. So the biggest issue is just maintaining that. And it's so freaking easy, dude. You just take a pair of scissors and you just cut off the ends and then you can propagate them. You can sell them. You can uh, regrow them back. You, there's, there's a million different options you can do. So for me, that is the biggest piece of pain, which is not bad at all. The maintenance is so easy. So, you know, if, if so, going bioactive is something you wanted to do, watch some videos on how to do it. Um, it's so easy to put together. And really at the end of the day, it is so much more worth it. It looks so much nicer to be able to walk in to your reptile room and be able to see a ecosystem in itself rather than just looking at a plain cage, you know, that doesn't really have anything in it. This one kind of looks bioactive, but it just doesn't have all the bioactive aspects of it. Um, it really is a, it's a beautiful science and that's the reason why I love it. So, um, yeah, if you guys need any help on going bioactive and want some tips and tricks and some of the issues that I've had to personally deal with when going bioactive, um, you know, it's, it's a learning process, so it does take time, but it is so worth it in the very end. But reach out to me if you guys have any questions about going bioactive or you'd like to, and we will see you in the next video.